Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to HGC Open Division North America Cup number seven. We're getting down to the wire here in this last cup. My name is Kat Peach. I am here to guide you through these games today, along with my friend Murda. Murda, how are you doing today? Oh, I am doing very well. I'm so stoked to get to finally get to catch with you again. Uh, it's been a little bit of time, Cat Peach, but here we are. We find ourselves here together, and it's cup number seven, the last one before the playoffs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, very much. It doesn't get any bigger than this leading up to the playoffs. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement going on in the bracket for tonight. Uh, essentially, top four spots maybe a bit more solidified going into this evening. However, those bottom four, to be quite honest, could be anyone's game. Someone maybe has a little bit of a rough night or if someone's really on top of themselves today, uh, we can see quite the shakeup in the standing. So I think this side of the bracket is going to have some exciting times, maybe some upsets. It would be a good time to see, I would say. If that were the case, a lot of opportunity for teams to make a move as uh, those I'd say around like seven through 12 are like, who's going to hop in even at rank 13 right now, Psy Storm, um, they have opportunity to even make it to the playoffs. And it really depends on how the teams play tonight. Uh, and can they make it past the teams that are top four, Scythe like Esports, Freebirds, Reborn, Necrodancers? Can they move past these teams? to make it to that next level to get enough points to find themselves in the playoffs next week. Yeah, and that's what everyone's striving for tonight. It's the, literally the last chance they have. So pulling all the punches out, or not pulling the punches, rather, and making sure they're going all in here. Uh, but to catch folks up on what's going on over here on the channel for this evening, we're going to start out tonight following FWC Esports versus Doki Doki Hots Club. So we'll see where we go in the bracket, where that will lead us. I'm sure we'll run into exciting teams and games all through this evening. Uh, in terms of the patch, we will be on that patch with those white main balance changes, uh, which also include a lot of those Kel'Thuzad changes, such as not being able to chain two structures, uh, as well as those Decker uh, Kane changes. So lots of exciting stuff coming in for this patch, which might shake up some of the talent choices and heroes choices uh that we see in this game Marta. uh yeah you're absolutely right i'm excited to see if we're going to get some white main uh we have some changes recently to kale Thos. he could be making an appearance um maybe and i was talking a little bit earlier about it maybe we even see a kelthazad tonight which would be absolutely nuts but i mean time will tell i think these teams are just about ready to head to the draft but, um and of Doom. It's going to be Towers of Doom, by the way. Towers an of Doom. An outstanding map that will take us down to the final moments, most likely. Uh, but how exciting is it to see the changes come live? And it's the final cup, and here we are in the midst of the action. You guys have been playing it in Hero League, Team League, uh, maybe your quick match games. But you're going to see it right now. Open Division playing for their lives here this season. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about that white main in particular... Uh, we've been seeing a very interesting reception initially to her in HGC, so I really wonder, especially with these changes, how that's going to translate into the draft tonight. Are we going to see her played at all? Is she going to be ban worthy, as we have seen a couple times throughout uh, this past weekend in HGC? Only time will tell, uh, but for sure it's going to be exciting. But for now, standard Rainer and Urel bans coming out. I definitely don't scoff at these at all going into Towers of Doom. Uh, neither do I. I like the Blaze ban here as well. And you see a focus. They're taking away the top two solar lane heroes. The next one up is the Haka, and he gets a tremendous amount of value here on Towers of Doom. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see him grabbed early in this draft because there's not a lot of options left in that solar lane. And this is arguably his best map to be played on. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, thinking about when you're talking about the solo lane, we have seen a return of some of the more assassin-focused uh, solo laners. Thrall's made a bit of a comeback. Malfiel seems to be uh, some kind of URL kryptonite, according to, to some, and we've seen a lot more played there. But Leoric Ana coming out for Doki Doki Hots Club here on the right. Ana first pick murder. I don't think that's something we uh, see very often here. Uh, so there is some fun stuff about to come. Is this a solo Ana? Do they want to pair it with something else? Uh, I mean, I, it's, oh, it's a skill hero, jam. and we're going to see a Lucio now, which... Okay, we're getting two really off-meta supports serve. right at the start of this one. It's going to be a good game already. And Zeratul to pair with the Lucio and, you know, Deadly Hero as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think FWC really banking on them being able to make those rotations along with that speed boost coming out from Lucio, making sure that they can get to those shrines before their opponents and get the advantage set up there. Uh, pair that with the Zera tool lurking in the shadows. You never know what's going to be around when you pop into a shrine if you're Doki Doki Hots Club. So a little bit to be worried about on that side. Uh, in terms of following up these bands, Chaos. Diablo Maya, but put that aside. We're getting a Cho'Gall with that, Ana Murda. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I was like, okay, Ana, something crazy's coming, and it's going to be Cho'Gall? Are you kidding me? Game number <laughs> one here? Like, all right, we'll see what they can pull out. And and now the Leoric pick even makes a bit more sense as well as, uh, you know, I was like, oh, let's see that to Haka, but now taking away Leoric is huge for them. Looks like it's going to be a Garrosh and Valera to try to throw at this Cho'Gall. Very interesting with the double stealth coming out for uh, FWC here, uh, which if you're trying to focus on that Cho'Gall, perhaps can work out. Hi, uh, wait for that stealth proc to make you entirely invisible. And then when Cho'Gall least expects, expects it, you have two dive characters going right onto them, which could result in a very dead Cho'Gall. Uh, it's more about whether the triple heals from Lucio help. are going to be enough to keep them alive if they go too deep. And I think this Jaina pick is absolutely perfect for them. They're lacking a bit of the burst as Cho'Gall really has a tremendous amount of sustained damage. Jaina's going to be their option to try to finish off some of these heroes. Uh, but her slows, how much value can Jaina get from those slows when you see Bernie Burns going to be playing Lucio on the other side? And uh, I actually played with Bernie Burn earlier this week. And he played Lucio in a match with me. I can tell you this guy is a beast on the DJ. Yeah, <laughs> on the DJ himself. Yeah, I mean, Towers of Doom, especially, there are so many walls for Lucio to skate over. If you're going a Celerando at level one, uh, that's so much additional speed boost to your team simply to, to dance around whatever composition that, you know, Doki Doki Hots Club seems to have here in game number one. Uh, so we're going to have to see if that does work out in a long time. But if you're saying that it's a comfort pick, you can never, ever doubt that at all, no matter what the matchup is. Uh, McNulty going to be playing that Garrosh. Uh, will they be able to have enough lockdown following it? They're going to have to use Valera as a form of CC, uh, which might limit her silence. But I think her silence does get Prepare limited with the Shogal. Let's introduce these teams, though, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So over here on the left in blue, we do have FWC Esports. We're going to have Axon on that Phoenix, Flyest Raven on Zeratul, Krovin on Valera, McNulty on Garrosh, and Bernie Burn, as we talked about, on that Lucio. And over on the right-hand we'll side, we have Doki Doki Hot seconds. Club. We see Unicorn Farts. Going to be playing the Ana Argentina boy on the Auric. We have Cone Tmog three, playing Chogal and Poxius going to be rounding it out well, on the Jaina. What are you waiting and for? I can't wait. Jaina going immediately into that Fingers of Frost and making sure as the solo damage, or not solo damage dealer, but as that burst dealer, or assassin, sorry, making sure that she has as much mana as possible late into the game to really defend those shrines. And we have an all in here in Minbara. Uh, yeah, and I think early game, obviously Cho'Gall so healthy. Ana is such an easy target for her to shoot him up with the heal guards. Um, so I, I really don't expect too much blood early in this game, but uh, we'll see who can get the lead early in this one, find the XP they need in these lanes. The Auric and Zeratul up top is an interesting matchup to say the least, uh, because I mean Zeratul, he has good wave clear. Obviously, the Auric does as well. Uh, but I, I think Zeratul is going to have to play a bit more carefully because Leoric, over time, should be able to win that lane with ease. Yeah, absolutely. I think Leoric absolutely wins out on that matchup. And I would really love for Zeratul just to at least not entirely lose out at the lane. Don't let Leoric push into your gate, and I think it's a win for that matchup. I also like the Flyest Raven simply rotating between between top and mid, trying to get as much soak as possible, knowing that they probably won't initially win out on that top lane. So good rotations coming out there, and even faster rotations thanks to Bernie Burn, uh, as him and company start to work on this siege camp on their side. Uh, so <laughs> a fun thing we have Contempt playing the Cho, um, and then we see uh, our boy T Mog playing Golf. And it's a hero that it's. Like, which one am I going to get to play today? Am I going to be the Cho? Am I going to be the Gaul? It's always a fun <laughs> thing when you're playing with your friends. 
Um, but I I'm super excited, as always. You get a Chogal game, game number one, and it's going to depend so much on how they work together in this matchup to make a difference of if they're going to be able to win this game. And Doki Doki, they really want to walk out of this matchup up against FWC with the W, so they're going to be relying a lot on those two finding their synergy, especially once you reach level 10. Absolutely. And back in the day, we used to talk about the level 16 spike that comes with Chogal. Once uh, they get unstoppable on that ability that allows them to regenerate health, that's been changed as of late. So is Chogal going to be as much of a late game threat as he has been in the past? Uh, it's hard to tell. I would never want to let a Chogal composition get the lead early on simply because of uh, that health regeneration later on anyway. So FWC, the name of their game is simply making sure that they can get early experience leads and not let that go post 16. And speaking of experience leads early, Zeratul has been doing such a fantastic job of catching that mid lane soak throughout the game. Uh, whereas I feel leoric has been a step behind. So we'll see if Argentina boy can pick up the pace because right now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, with the way that Flyus Raven is playing that Zeratul, soaking it up. He has zero hero damage right now. It's been all getting these minions. <laughs> Sounds like a classic matchup of uh, solo laners not really getting too much enemy damage in, but with the top shrines being traded now, all focus is on this bottom bottom shrine. McNulty looking incredibly low as uh, Chogal trying to go in. Contamog backing out, getting those heals from Anna. Uh, make sure they can sustain. Lee Orc ends up falling to Seratul. Flies Raven able to get that pick while everyone's distracted here on this bottom shrine. Yeah, get hyped up if you're an FWC fan. First blood, Flyest Raven picking off Leoric in the rotation, but it's just a Leoric. He'll be back up in a moment. He's gonna be right on top of this point. So getting that full health, getting that full mana, it's actually not a terrible thing for Leoric and, and his team here. Doki Doki was trying to get on this point to channel, but it seems as though they're getting poked around the other side by Valera. So uh, a little bit of a spread out offense here from both sides. And it's gonna depend a lot on if they can find this spell Leoric again. And there it is, Bernie Burn and McNulty finishing it off with Axon. Second kill of the game on Leoric. And here we go. Channeling is FWC Esports. Yeah, Doki Doki Hots Club end up licking their wounds a little bit after that fight, after Argentina Boy ends up falling nearly twice in a row. You could say maybe trait value of some kind, but not really too much. Um, but the Chogal Jaina composition did so well in poking out that shrine. Uh, for a lot of that phase, Proven going real deep here onto Poxius should be able to get away just fine for now. Uh, but the, uh, the threat of those two stealth characters everywhere on the map for that Shogal in later team fights, for that Jaina too, even that Ana, uh, those really squishy characters always having to keep an extra eye out for if they see that little glimmer uh, as all focus comes back onto the Shogal here, Maria. Yeah, Consmog, I think it'll be okay. Unicorn farts here with the heals. Uh, and of course, they're gonna have to back up. Towers are here, Pumpkin Sappers are here, but it's gonna be a matchup here in this bottom lane. Both sides with their Pumpkin Sappers out, and look at Phoenix just absolutely wreck through these guys. They're gonna fall and have an opportunity to push with their own as Chogal Follow got tossed there by Garrosh, uh, but he's staying strong. Unicorn Parts keeping him alive, but not before those Sappers crash into the wall, and that is a huge deal in this bottom lane as FWC is now flipping the Chogal once again but the shoves are on point from T-Mog keeping his Cho alive and back to safety there. Yeah back to safety that was an amazing save by Unicorn Farts there making sure Chogal did not fall because that would have been awful for Doki Doki Hots had that happened. The Zapper Camp was taken in the time being up in that top lane so that's pressure up there that Zeratul is going to have to worry about for the time being one thing I want to call out that I haven't gotten to talk about yet, we're seeing Frost Armor at level 4 coming out from Jaina instead of the Piercing Ice Lance, uh, which is in direct response to those two stealth characters roaming around. And we see Valera trying to get onto Unicorn Farts, who is almost dead, 100 HP, not able to secure the kill, and Krovin barely dodging Cho Doll damage, able to get away for the time being. Oh man, that swipe from Argentina boy barely missed. Proven's gonna escape with his life, but FWC still has plenty of damage on this top side. Look at Phoenix go, sending Chogal back. Unicorn parts is still below 50% health. And you know Ana, she has a lot of trouble healing herself up 
has to use that grenade on herself just to get any sort of help in her trait, which a lot of people have recently complained just isn't enough self-healing for the hero. So, um, again, I think once you can get on that Ana and you're seeing it with the Valera, with the, uh, uh, with the Zera tool, and especially with Axon right there, look at that combo finally taking out Ana first time in this game. But they're gonna lose Valera on the other side, and, and I, you get the point. You got the uh, altar off. That's what really matters. And they take now an eight-shot lead here on Towers of Doom. Yeah, eight-shot lead in our level ten to boot. And can we just call out the positioning of both stealth players in that fight? You had Flyus Raving hanging out on top, keeping an eye on the orc. You had uh, you had Croven down in the shrine area, making sure that perhaps they can capitalize on the kill before they even attempt to get the shrine. That was such great mind play coming out from FWC Esports, and I applaud that so much. A beautiful Ring of Frost, though, coming out here, but Khan Timok, not able to live. Chogol ends up falling here, trying to protect this camp and Leoric to boot as well. This is an enormous power play in the game, to say the least. Pumpkin Sappers will be pushing in this bottom lane, just gonna be Poxius and Unicorn Farts here in defense. But I think we can even expect to see a solid attempt at taking down this fort, as they do have a minion wave here. But the one thing you have to note is just with the Valera, they sort of lack a bit of siege damage. Um, they need that Phoenix to be able to make the rotation here. But right now, Axon over on yet another camp to push his bottom lane out. They will not be able to make the play before Cholgal respawns and shows up here to now push back Bernie Burn and McNulty. Yeah, however, they are going to have the threat of those zappers now that these two shrines are spawning up in that top lane. So it's either you you split and try to take out those zappers before they hit your bell tower, uh, or you stay down here and possibly give up a shrine. We don't necessarily see the orc committing to defending down here just yet, rather trying to trade one for one on these, which is going to give FWC a short window of opportunity to guide these zappers in and potentially convert this bell tower in time perhaps even get another kill to boot focus again on that choke all Krovin trying to get that damage in the upheaval though pulls Krovin in takes tower shots and does a falling murder oh that upheaval was on point but here comes Axon trying to respond and he's gonna fall himself so now a double kill for Doki Doki make it three as Garrosh is gonna fall up top you saw Zeratul though take care of Leoric and that means Zara is going to potentially be able to pick up both of these altars that spawned up here. The whole time as they're fighting over on that bottom side, altars respawn. And unless Leoric spawns and he does, oh! but he didn't get it in time. The flyest play you will see all day. Fly Draven picking up that altar with the last moment possible. That's got to feel so good if you're Flyus Raven being able to say, you tried, but you just missed by a microsecond here. But look at this bush push onto this bell tower in the bot lane after those kills, knowing that they weren't going to be able to get those shrines, committing to getting that siege presence down in bot, but full retreat now for Doki Doki Hots as FWC is fully spawned back and Shogal trying to get us away. Unicorn Farts doing so well to keep them alive, but... Flyus Raven with the dive to confirm the kill ends up giving their life for it though, but a one for two trade by all technicality, uh, possibly worth. What do you think, Berta? Yeah, and, and it's about to be a funny situation. You don't see this often. Each side's gonna have the opposite side bell tower in the bottom lane for a brief period here. Uh, but a huge play there, and I don't mind Zeratul dying there. I, I think he wished that he had like a wormhole or something out, but of course he didn't take it. Uh, so he dies there, but you take out the Chogall, it's so worth. Big pick up there um, for Fly Raven. And I think so far in this early game, he's your MVP for FWC. We'll see if they can pull out the win here. Yeah, definitely see. It looks like they're on track for it thus far with quite a significant lead of 16 in terms of core health. However, it is Towers of Doom. You never know how things are going to turn around, especially with a late gate Chogall composition. So far, a little bit rough for Doki Doki Hot Club as they do uh, end up gaining their bottom bell tower back here right before the shrine, which puts them in a prime opportunity to start chunking away at that lead that FWC currently has. Swift here. Alters have spawned, and with taking back that bell tower on the bottom right, it now means Doki Doki is looking at shooting off five if they can get on one of these capture points. Big up people, but not connecting. Indomitable was there in time, but I think McNulty was actually out of the target. Uh, as now he's tossing on Kantmog, and Chogol has to start backing up. Ana's under pressure, too big jump on top. 
Bernie Burn getting tossed over by McNulty and they find the kill on Ana. Now Bernie Burn's in trouble as he stood there full combo from Jaina and that's gonna be a kill on the other side so they will exchange these altars one for each side but with the five towers for Doki Doki they take a slight uh, lead there between those two altars and they find themselves now back only 14 shots in this matchup. Yeah, Doki Doki also not willing to give up yet with Chogol on the ch on the chase for that Krovin. Hopefully going to get out of there just fine by the skin of their teeth there, Murda. Amazing plays. Proxy is trying to get down Flyus Raven. Flyus Raven though, able to get out for the time being. Leoric is on the chase. Cho and Gaul falling back toward that bell tower before. And Argentina Boy now the lone a uh, skeletal king here trying to use Ensume to buy a little bit of time. Unicorn parts finally returning down here, trying to keep them alive, but it's all for naught in the Skeleton King yet again falling here in a massive bloodshed of a battle in this bottom lane. You just saw some absolute footwork there by Flyus Raven. Dancing around that Jaina able to pick him up. His teammates were even able to find the Chogol. So now opportunity once again to recapture this bell tower, bottom right of the map. As uh, Zeracool is, he found them their level 16s. They're looking really hot in this matchup right now. They're still up those 14 points. And they have control now of his bottom lane. And with a triple altar spawning, they have a potential to put themselves only two shots away from winning this one. We'll see what they can do. They're even gonna look for some sappers here on the bottom side. Yeah, cause additional pressure. Have your uh, opponents try to spread out. I think the reason that bottom fight went so well for FWC is that they were able to split up the members of Doki Doki Hots Club. As an entire unit, Shogal, Jaina, Ana, that's all terrifying. But when you split them up, they start to fall. They're easier to collapse on. And so they're trying to cause that kind of split yet again to give themselves a better opportunity to get these core shots. Looks like Doki Doki Hots Club getting their shrine. Can they defend this top one will be the question as we have all these members coming in response, but Argentina Boy looking kind of blue low is going to be the first of all. The boss ends up being cracked by accident, doing damage onto Kantamog. The Nana Boost is going to come out, as we saw last time, not too much value coming out of it. And the beautiful escape from Flyos Raven, giving up the shrine for the time being. Is there any poke to dissuade this Shogal? Well, that's one thing they lack in this comp is any sort of poke damage, especially with Phoenix down right now. Uh, they have to rely on their stealth heroes to get in here, but um, they're really having trouble getting on top of the Ana right now in this certain spot. And here goes Probin looking for that Ana backside. Oh, oh my god. All right, so that is a huge pickup on Jaina, but they're not going to find the Ana. She survives. Choco is actually the one holding this down right now. He came back to help support that. And with that moment, it means that Doki Doki is going to be able to capture this point. I don't think Phoenix is going to make it in time, but he's coming in from the left-hand side of your map. And it, indeed, Argentina Boy does pick up that altar. They will bring the game a bit closer and potentially save themselves here on map number one, Towers 2. Yeah, they're able to stall this out just a little bit more. They are still down two levels, but they have caught up on that talent. Uh, and now again, with that 16 coming out from Chogol, a little bit of a beefier boy you're gonna have to deal with there. Uh, not as easy to take down as he has been uh, for the rest of this game. Uh, we still haven't had Ice Block achieved yet for Jaina, which I think is very important to know. So I think before that Frostbite quest is completed, uh, these stealth characters, Valera, Zeratul, needs to get onto her and try to get her out soon, or else that's going to be so hard to do in the future. So if you're going to capitalize on the Jaina pick, they have to do it now. Yeah, they got to do it now. And I think with this response coming out, all five members of FWC are here. Can they find a kill on anything? There's going to be a purification salvo, but actually got interrupted by the sleep dart of Unicorn Farts and his Ana, so they're looking good. Turning this back around, Chogol pushing forward, throwing out those bowling balls, but not able to connect yet. He pops in his Molten Core, but he's gonna survive. Ana, keeping everything up. They even get the sport back. Pumpkin Sapper is still here, and Tomb only hitting his own Chogol from the Auric, as now FWC, they're gonna have to back up didn't go their way here in this bottom fight and they're gonna go ahead and lick their wounds use some taps and try to get set up for this next altar spawning in 15 seconds i do gotta call out birdie burn though 
for that amazing sound barrier after the upheaval. I thought there would have been two members flat out dead in that situation for FWC, but the split second reaction time coming out of that Lucio ult saved the entire team in that fight, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> great call on them, able to live another day, not lose these members, and are now able to contest this shrine coming out in the bottom lane. Garrosh doing a great job, didn't get the taunt in time, so Axon's gonna be interrupted by Topside Krobing. Gonna finish off Jane a huge pick here in this uh, bottom side matchup. And now it's all gonna be up to Axon. Can he poke them back? But McNulty getting stuck inside that tomb. he's in trouble, tossing it around. Back in here once again as Fly Straven, but he's so low. Has some poison damage job, but ends up finding the kill on the Yorick. Chobo could be nest getting silenced. A lot of burst damage coming, and that's four members Heroes down. Sleep. For Doki Doki as Valera is gonna drop back, find another altar. The level 20 talents are here, and FWC is looking like they're ready to potentially move up top to a boss. And Nano Boost was used by Ana and hardly got any value since it was landing on Chogol. Chogol died maybe two seconds later, and that is a cooldown that they're not gonna have for a little bit. It should be up by the time the next shrine does. Spawn, if they can survive that long, there are zappers that should convert that bell tower in the bottom or at least start to damage it. Uh, but all eyes on this boss for FWC to get them closer. They will need a single shrine after getting this in order to complete this game, which really puts Doki Doki Hot Club immediately on their toes. They have to get 20 and they need to get it as soon as possible. But when defending another shrine, uh, I feel like they're in the, in the midst of a lot of not ideal options here, Murda. Yeah, and of course, they're still seeking out those level 20 talents. They should be able to have it by time this next altar phase spawns. We're going to see a double altar phase on the bottom side of the map. So this bottom lane is also very important for Doki Doki to hold on to. They cannot afford to give up their rotation path back to safety. They don't have their well here, which is another big talking point because on the opposite side, we do see FWC has theirs available. So if any sort of re-engagement has to happen, look for FWC to have that advantage as both their self heroes are here waiting in the shadows. We're in seen by Chogo, but he's able to back up. Holds the upheaval, but nothing in its path, Cat Peach. Yeah, not gonna have upheaval for defending this shrine coming up in 20 seconds is a huge loss for Doki Doki Hots Club. They can only seemingly, at this point, try to poke to 20 and try to continue to poke as best they can until they find some kind of opportune team fight here, which is going to be really hard given the circumstances. They still have four heroes up. Um, and four up on the side of FWC as well. Chogol, though, taking a brunt of the sandwich. Argentina Boy on the fight for their lives end up using the Entomb yet again in order to defend themselves. But Axel and Krovin up here being able to channel on this shrine. And ladies and gentlemen, that is game number one going over to FWC Esports. Uh, they made it look good 22 to nine in the kill department. FWC taking game number one over Doki Doki Hots Club. And the story of this one, double stealth. Flyus Raven and Krovin Looking really good. Zeratul picking up 10 kills. Valera had five. And for myself personally, Flyest Raven was by far my MVP in that match. He looked outstanding. Yeah, so many great flanks, so many great picks coming out from that Zeratul play. Uh, such a really deep understanding of the hero, uh, I am convinced of after that play. And as you said, double stealth into a Chogol composition seems to have worked for them. I wonder if we're going to see anything super crazy going into game number two, uh, which we will find out the map for that very, very soon. Uh, but is this the new trend? Double stealth coming out? What do you think? How much longevity does that kind of strategy have? On a map like Towers of Doom, I feel like there's a lot of fun spots where they were able to wait out and kind of jump. Like that Leoric was... He definitely got trade value that game, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, they, they found him so many times in rotations, and like he never really was able to feel safe the entire time. Uh, obviously, we understand the pick Leoric was to help uh, protect the Chogol as a counter option to it. But uh, in that instance, uh, you sort of wish you had something a little tankier because Leoric really was getting abused throughout the match.